May June 2020, paper one, economics. The first question. So which one of the following is the term for the next best alternative given up? When the choice is made. When the choice is made, that means there's gonna be the next alternative for gun. And the next best alternative for gun is the opportunity cost. So the answer is C. Question two. Which one of the following options shows the effects on the market for motorcycle helmets after a fall in the price of motorcycles? A motorcycle or a, an helmet, a helmet is a complementary good for motorcycle. So a fall in motorcycle will bring about an increase in the demand for helmet. And an increase in demand for the helmet will shift the demand curve rightward from D to D1. And as a result of that, the price will increase. We're going to have a new equilibrium price at P1. So the answer is B. Question C. It said, what is meant by the term external cost? When we talk about external cost, this is a negative spillover of production or consumption on third parties. Example is pollution. Question D. So this is one example of an external benefit. When we talk about external benefit, external benefit is a positive spillover of production or consumption on third parties. An example is education. Then question E. They said, divine, uh, the problem of scarcity is that there, is, uh, there are limited ones and finite resources. Divine the term wants. Wants are things we desire. Goods and services that we desire. So our living doesn't depend on them. Example is holiday in Bahamas. So that is clear. Go to question F. They said private facilities are the case study anyway. So they said uh, we have the private facility for swimmer. So they said we should calculate the excess demand. For excess demand, excess demand occurs when the price is set below the equilibrium price. That's the first thing. Or excess demand implies that supply exceeds demand. So in this case, total quantity supplied is 9,000. Based on 3,000 each month, 3,000 multiplied by 3, that's 9,000. Then the total quantity demanded is 3,600, 3,200, and 3,100. So the total quantity demanded is 9,900, and supply is 9,000. So demand exceeds supply here. So we have a negative of 900, which is excess demand. Go on to question. Question G. It says, using the diagram below, draw the likely effect on the market for bread after decreasing the population. Label the new curve at the new equilibrium price and new equilibrium quantity. A decrease in population will reduce the quantity demanded for bread, shifting the demand curve left road from D to D1. As a result of that, there will be a low, lower equilibrium price at P1 because the quantity supply has, or the quantity demanded has reduced from key, QE to Q1. Question H. Explain one possible barrier to entry a new firm to entry a new firm might face when trying to enter the in this industry. So barriers to entry simply means restriction that discourage new firms to set up in an industry. One barrier to entry could be cause high cost of advertisement. Larger firms such as Emmy Group, UMG, and BMG may be able to spread their marketing cost across different services rendered, which a small firm or a new firm might not struggle to do because it's new. The next one. The next one. It said, with reference to the data above and your knowledge of economics, analyze why all four factors of production might be used to produce coffee. For what are factors of production? Factors of, factors of production are resources that help in the production of goods and services. So they are land, labor, capital, and enterprise. So how, without factors of production, we cannot produce goods. So that means we need land. Based on the case study, land is needed to produce coffee, with coffee plants, yes? So labor, the beans are picked up by hand, which, by hand, which means workers are needed. Capital, machines are used for the conversion from its natural state for consumption. Then enterprise, this controls other factors of production. That's the owner of the coffee businesses. Then, based on the above analysis I made, production of coffee cannot be efficient without all factors of production. So that answers that. So that ends question one. So we go to question two. They said, uh, which one of the following options is the most suitable term for the type of market shown in this figure? Based on this pie chart, it shows that a firm dominates the market in Azerbaijan by 93%. And when we have a, a firm dominating a whole market, it's more of a monopoly. So the answer is C. Question B. Which one of the following is the reason why consumers may not maximize benefits? 
Because Mars may actually accurately calculate the satisfaction they gain. If they are able to calculate the satisfaction gain, they will be able to maximize benefit. Consumers are always rational when making decisions. That makes them to be rational, then they will be able to maximize their benefit. D. Consumers never copy the behavior of others. If they don't copy behaviors of others, that means they, can, they are able to maximize their benefit. So the answer is B. So A, C, and D makes consumers to be rational, therefore will maximize their satisfaction. I think that's done. So we'll go to question, question C. It says, state the, form, state the formula for price elasticity of supply. For price elasticity of supply is the degree of responsiveness between the quantity supply of a product as a result of a change in price. So PES is percentage change in quantity supply over percentage change in price. So that's done. The second for question D. Calculate the total variable cost for the firm in the month of May. So we have variable costs, which are the costs that changes as level of output changes. So here, our TVC is our we have rent, which is a fixed cost. We have variable raw material, which is VC. We have advertising, which is FC, and we have labor cost, which is also FC, VC. So our VC here is raw materials and cost of labor, which is 17,000. So we'll move on. It said, divide the term takeover. This implies to the control of a firm over another. Then question F. Describe one, <coughs> describe one reason why demand for a product usually becomes more price elastic over time. Price elastic implies that there is a significant change in the quantity demanded of a product as a result of a change in price. So the PED of a product could be price elastic if there are substitutes available, as this allows customers to switch. That's why it is price elastic. There are other factors that could make uh, the, uh, this, uh, the demand for a product to be price elastic. Time also, time also determines it. The proportion of income also determines it. So, but we, are, we only need one. So they said, explain one reason why the UK government may use fines to reduce the negative externalities caused by drivers speeding in urban areas. A fine would discourage drivers from overspeeding as it will mean that they have to pay if caught, if caught, and this reduces their income. Therefore, drivers will drive within the speed limit, which may reduce accidents, as accidents can be considered as a negative externality. We have question H. We said, with reference to the data above and your knowledge of economics, assess effective public sector ownership and private sector ownership are likely to, to be as a, to solve economic problem. Well, the public sector is a business that is business owned and controlled by the government, while the private sector is a business owned and controlled by individuals, group of individuals or private firms. The basic economic problem is scarcity, which brings about the economic question of what to produce, how to produce, and for whom to produce to. So these questions have to be answered with uh, when there is allocation of resources. So for the private sector ownership, such as in Japan, based on the case study, which produces electronics and entertainment, is likely to be efficient as it needs to maximize profit at the same time, meet customer needs. This, will make, this meant that resources won't be wasted during production because a private sector firm would want to maximize profit. As a result, they won't be wasting resources. Then, however, countries such as Cuba, which rely mostly on the public sector, may also be efficient as it will only produce goods that are needed by consumers or customers, or which are considered important for the public in terms of quantities, which means le loss, less waste of resources. Also, the public sector, which aim is to improve quality service, may be able to provide infrastructure, goods, and electricity at a lower rate, unlike the private sector, which may only provide goods and services for those who can afford them. So that is efficient. That is the assessment on public and private.